Good afternoon. I'd like to call the regular <clears throat> Stanley County Board of Commissioners meeting to order on May the 19th at 7 p.m. I'd like to welcome everyone here. Appreciate you all coming, especially our media. And at this time, I will ask Vice Chairman Donovan for invocation. Um, most of you probably know that um, um, the five of us up here don't always agree on everything and neither were the seven that are getting ready to sit in these chairs either. Um, and I found it interesting over the recent debate about uh, school prayer that they seem to think that that was the case. Uh, but until we, we vote to, th for the chairman to speak for us, uh, no one speaks for us, we speak for ourselves. And that's the same way it is with prayer. And finally, uh, I guess just before our meeting last time, Supreme Court uh, agreed that we have that opportunity to pray and to say what we want to when we pray. So as always, I'm getting ready to pray, but this just is Lindsay talking. This, I'm not speaking for the rest of these people, uh, but I'm just talking about me. And I'm hoping that um, when we pray, we pray and the effects of those prayers do impact our decisions and we do make good decisions for everybody in Stanley County. Let us pray together. Father, I, I just uh, thank you tonight for an opportunity to um, approach you. Uh, your word tells us that we are capable of doing that and that uh, you encourage us to do that, to seek guidance from you, uh, to ask for wisdom, uh, to um, sometimes just uh, to vet the difficulties and frustrations we have with others and so that you can give us a spirit of peace and guidance and show us how that we should behave as human beings and how we should get along and how we should work together. I thank you for the opportunity to, to live in this country where we have, at least for now, the opportunity to say public prayers as well as to speak privately with you anytime and at all times. I ask tonight that you uh, give us ears to hear the things that uh, we should pay attention to, give us wisdom to make decisions that are profitable for all the citizens that we serve, and help us individually, uh, help me individually tonight to be the, the person that, that you've called me to be, that you've empowered me to be, and that your spirit that lives within me enables me to be. And I'm glad tonight to have this prayer and say it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand with us as we pledge allegiance to the flag. Approval or adjustment to the agenda. I have one addition that be the resolution about the uh, school lottery funds. So it'll be add that as item six, and then consent agenda will be item seven. Are there any other uh, changes or additions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda as changed. I make a motion to accept the agenda as changed. Motion to approve by. Uh, Commissioner Asciutto, do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Com uh, Commissioner Morton. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Commissioner Donovan, if you would, would you run this meeting? I back's hurt me a little bit, and I need to. I may have to grimace a little bit. If you would run the meeting for me tonight, thank you, sir. Okay. We certainly hope that uh, you'll be feeling better. Um, and be able to stick with us and stay with us. First item on the agenda is. The Juvenile Crime Prevention Council annual certification. And tonight we have uh, as our presenter Jackie DeSantis, Stanley County JCPC chairperson. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening. Most of you know me as your attorney, the DSS attorney, and also the chair. I came before you last year. I'm here again. Every year the JCPC program provides the county with funds. Those funds are kind of routed through the county but generally controlled by the board. And because of that, we need the county's approval. I think you may have 
I think Ms. Um, Brummett did provide you all with a copy of the certification that I actually will need to be signed by the chairman. And this year again, they awarded the possibility of awarding the county 174,000. We think that we provided good services last year through the Lift Academy, through the restitution program. And we also had the Rowan County program that was also available for, they had funding last year, but that was for sex offender treatment. Luckily, we didn't use those funds. They would be returned to the program itself to the count to the um, state and this year we have four programs and that have been approved for next year's funds and like I said they will run through the county however all I uh, what I need from you all is approval of the certification that states that we've were JCPC board is doing what they need to do and also the approval of a thousand dollar funds out of the hundred seventy four thousand dollars that we are provided we use a thousand of that for meetings and that was it that's the only funds and we would need approval of those funds thank you does anyone thank you. have any uh, questions of mr. Santos I know that uh, I, had, I had the privilege of serving on JCPC and the uh, the membership is a broad array of folks you didn't go through the list but they obviously are, are people that both serve uh, the courts and law enforcement with social services uh, parks and recreation uh, members of the community United Way it's a broad array of people and people who are all seemingly interested in, in making sure that uh, uh, justice is, is, is served and we, especially with the, with, with the juveniles throughout our community so we certainly appreciate those who, who are served you didn't mention it but the certification is actually a requirement that uh, of the North Carolina Department of Public Safety so it's something that we should do but if, if there are no questions certainly would entertain a motion at this time Chairman, I make a motion to approve the uh, members list and to accept the thousand dollars for the 2014-15 budget. Second. Yeah, we have a motion by Commissioner McIntyre, second by Commissioner Shito, that that, that we approve uh, this presentation. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second item on our agenda tonight is a presentation of the budget uh, for the Stanley County Schools for fiscal year 2014-15, and we're happy to have back in front of us tonight Dr. Terry Griffin, our school superintendent. Welcome. Thank you. If I can get the PowerPoint up and going here. Thank you for the opportunity to stand before you this evening and present Stanley County Schools budget request for the 2014-15 school year. Uh, this evening I have Mr. Bill Jasey, the school system's chief finance officer with me, and along with Mr. Troy Pressler, uh, the school system's chief technology officer, and they'll be available to help uh, assist with any questions that you may have at the end of the presentation along with myself. I'd also like to thank members, representatives from Stanley County Schools Board of Education for being here this evening as well. In front of you, you see Stanley County Schools' uh, vision and mission statement. The information that you will hear this evening supports our vision and reflects the mission care um, of Stanley County Schools. How is Stanley County Schools doing as a school system? One of the best ways to tell our story is by looking at our graduation data. Uh, as you look at this graph here, you can see that the cohort graduation rate for Stanley County Schools was 82.3% um, for the 2012-13 school year. And I'd like to say that despite state and budget cuts over the past six years, uh, we are at our highest cohort graduation rate over this period of time. Um, I'd also like to point out to you on the right the results of our 2012-13 graduation data verification survey. Um, if you look at these statistics, it tells you consistent with historical data that 87% of our graduates planned this past year to further their education in either four or two year programs. 5% plan to enter the military and 8% plan to enter the workforce. 
I also like to point out that the average scholarship received each year by Stanley County School seniors is in the range of $1.5 million. So uh, again, our graduates are competing for and receiving uh, scholarship monies to help them further their educational plans. These facts continue to help tell our story. Of particular interest here is the source of our revenues. In the lower right hand corner, uh, you see that 80, excuse me, 68 percent of our budget is state funded, 18 percent is locally funded by you, the commissioners, and 8 percent is federally funded, and additional 6 percent through Enterprise, which is our actual our child nutrition um, budget. The bottom bullet there points out that our 13-14 operating budget uh, for Stanley County Schools was $73,431,398. And again, I mention the fact of where we get our operating budget to emphasize the impact that state cuts have had on our operating budget over the past six or seven years. I'd also like to direct your attention to the fact that uh, according to the North Carolina report card, Stanley County class sizes are equal or less to the state average in all great spans. And also would like to point out the next to the last bullet here that during the 12-13 school year that Stanley County Schools awarded over 500, 552 industry related credentials as a part of our career technical education courses. Those were credentials in the area of construction, healthcare, food industry, and, and, and business. As we begin the process of preparing our budget for the 14 15 school year, um, stakeholders and myself began reviewing data from a variety of sources, both state and local sources. And again, uh, this data will be used to substantiate my budget request for the 14-15 school year to note progress areas and identify focus areas in our strategic plan. Stanley County Schools first goal is to deliver an instructional program that will prepare our students for the future and that's students at all levels, all ability levels and all interest levels. On the right hand side you see some of the key accomplishments that are aligned with goal one during the 13, 14 or our current year. Through our local current expense budget you funded, last year you funded four online facilitators to facilitate the delivery of online courses in our high schools. Uh, we were able to develop 10 courses and we've had students in all of our high schools enrolled in, we're calling it Stanley Online, um, as well as students across the system enrolled in North Carolina or enrolled in courses through the North Carolina School of Science and Math. Uh, we also have had students enrolled in courses taught through Stanley Community College for college credit through the Career and College Promise. And again, I want to thank you for allowing us those positions this current year in order to provide our students with this opportunity. We utilized our capital outlay budget this current year as a funding source for the implementation of our one-to-one -one Chromebook project. And again, I'll not read each and every line there to you, but uh, I know you've had time to, to look at the uh, materials that you may have had ahead of time regarding our accomplishments. The next couple slides will outline some of the priority areas that I believe are important as we move into the 2014-15 school year. Now, I know this is a lot of lines here, but what I would ask you to look at here are the red bars. And the red bars here indicate Stanley County as compared to the state area or the state itself in terms of proficiency. In the upper left hand corner it shows our overall end of grade assessments. These are, um, this is math, reading, and our science scores as compared to the state average. Uh, there was a 2.6 percent variance in our overall proficiency and that of the state. When you look at the end of course assessments, and these are our um, assessments that we, state assessments that we give in high school, there was a 3.1% variance in our level of proficiency in that of the state. 
The composite uh, tells the overall story. We are in the average range, um, 2.7 point difference in Stanley County and the state. However, I acknowledge we have room for improvement. And uh, the following slides will key in on specific areas and reflecting the need to invest both human and capital resources as we move into the 2014-15 school year. Literacy in grades K through 8 has been and must continue to be a focus area. Um, during the current 2013-14 school years, the state reduction of teacher assistance necessi necessitated the reduction of teacher assistant, the teacher assistant workday in Stanley County from eight hours to seven and a half hours each day. As noted by our teachers and principals, uh, this reduction has placed a huge strain on their ability to schedule and to support small reading groups in our school elementary schools. As noted, and based on feedback from our classroom te teachers, materials to promote student engagement through hands-on science labs uh, will be a wise investment for the 2014-15 school year. I will be asking for a one-time budget increase of $83,000 to provide each school additional science lab materials. Literacy development extends beyond the elementary school uh, elementary years. Uh, therefore, I am requesting a one-time budget increase of $83,000 to invest in developmentally age-appropriate literacy materials to support grades K through 12. I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this slide um, this afternoon. To the right, you see some dropout facts, and again, I'm not going to read those to you. Um, I would like to note that Stanley County Schools had 110 dropouts for the 2012-13 school year. I'd also like to note that lower fa the fact on the bottom right-hand column there is that a dropout has the potential of cost, and again, this is general information, not just Stanley County. Um, compiled by the National Dropout Association that, stand, that a dropout has the potential amount of 500000 or cost a com community a potential $500,000 over the dropout's lifetime. Within our current budget, uh, we have implemented dropout prevention committees in our high schools and plan to expand them into our middle schools during 2014-15 school year. We are partnering with Stanley Community College to optimize career and technical pro programs that are available to our students through career college and career promise. As noted on the trend graph here on the lower left-hand side, Stanley County Schools reduced dropouts three consecutive years. During this time frame, we utilized an evening credit recovery program. The program was funded by a North Carolina dropout prevention grant, and it has since been eliminated through state budget reductions. This evening, I will be requesting an increase of $130,000 in our local budget to invest in credit recovery and career development for potential dropouts. The money will be utilized to pay uh, staff for working additional evening hours. This slide summarizes the 14-15 uh, budget priorities and requests to support goal, which support goal one of our strategic plan. It does show an increase of 296,000, including 130 as continuation for the C Career Development Dropout Prevention Center. However, I would like to note to you, I have no problem with continued funding or funding being um, stopped after the 2014-15 school year contingent upon the demonstrated impact of our dropout and graduation rates. So again, we will evaluate the program um, and would be requesting uh, the continuation of support for this program based on the impact that it's having on our dropout rates. The second goal of Stanley County Schools is to attract and retain quality instructional leaders at all levels. This slide notes some of our accomplishments for the 2013-14 fiscal year under Goal 2. 
The PD or professional development noted in the last three bullets was funded through grants and partnerships. In order to provide focused and consistent follow-up on professional development in our high schools, I am requesting a $121,174 increase in our local budget to fund curriculum and professional development lead teachers. For the upcoming school year, I'd like to phase this in over a two-year period. I'm asking this amount um, to cover the addition of two uh, lead teachers. Again, my goal is to have one in each high school who would also serve the middle schools that feed into them. Moving forward, should our state budget reach a level that would allow us to utilize state funds for these positions, I certainly would not expect uh, these positions to remain in the local budget. And again, when I presented this presentation to my board of, or actually to my finance committee, the Board of Education, they asked for some data that would support the effectiveness or uh, of such positions. And um, what I was able to do is I noted some of the some of the districts surrounding districts that scored uh, higher than Stanley County in the area of secondary education and one of the common threads that ran into their staffing patterns was that they do have either assistant principals for instruction um, or they have curriculum support um, individuals that work in the schools to support curriculum development and data analysis This slide uh, summarizes goal two priorities for the 2014-15 fiscal year. Uh, it reflects an increase of $279,674 to the budget. Again, $158,500 of that is to move our teacher assistants back to an eight-hour workday to support literacy in K-2 and to add two locally paid teacher positions in our high schools. It is the goal of Stanley County Schools to deliver instructional programs in a safe teaching and learning environment. And so th this goal three supports healthy and safe students and employees. During the 2013-14 fiscal year, we noted many accomplishments. Last year, you granted us an increase in our local budget of $57,038 to add an additional school resource officer. We sought after and supplemented our budget for the current year by approximately 126,000 with North Carolina safety grants to add two more or two additional SR school SROs and funding for the installation of panic alarms in all of our schools and we'll be working to get those installed and hopefully uh, and the goal is to have those in place by the beginning of the 14-15 school year. Also through an increase of 100 and 26,000 in our 2013-14 capital outlay budget, we are installing security access systems in our high schools. Um, we are in the process, I think West Stanley High School is currently, um, be, is currently being installed there. Uh, we're also going to be able to install a solution at Albemarle High School with the monies that you allocated for this school year. And I would note that we expect to be able to complete the other two high schools without asking for an additional increase to, to cover that installation. During our needs assessment for the upcoming school year, we noted the need to lower our student to nurse ratio. This slide indicates the scope of duties of a school nurse in Stanley County Schools. Uh, it also indicates a ratio of one nurse to 1,149 students. In order to help lower this ratio, I am requesting an increase of $60,587 to invest in additional nurse for the upcoming school year. Uh, this, the addition of one school nurse would lower our student to nurse ratio to one to 1,241. Uh, it's still higher than many of our surrounding districts as noted by the chart here, but it is certainly a start in the right direction. The 
This slide shows another important area in our overall classroom support, and that's our social workers. Uh, currently, we have three social workers uh, to support approximately uh, 8,700 students in Stanley County Schools, uh, making a ratio of approximately one to 3,000 students. Uh, we are fortunate to have just to, to have received a grant through JCPC, that I think you just uh, got that information, uh, for approximately $15,000 to support the addition uh, of a social worker to support the area of truancy reduction. Um, I am requesting an increase of $45,587 to supplement this amount uh, needed to employ an additional social worker for the district. This next slide addresses our need for certified athletic trainers. Our needs assessment continues to, sh to show the need for certified athletic trainers to reduce liability and to support the safety of our student athletes. We are in the process, in the process of negotiating a partnership with Stanley Regional or Carolina Healthcare to phase certified athletic trainers into all four of our high schools. My goal is to add two certified athletic trainers during the 2014-15 school year and then two additional ones during the 2015-16 school year. This evening I am requesting a one-time um, increase of $40,000 um, to be utilized as a startup for the program. In support of keeping our students healthy and active, our middle schools have expressed a strong interest in adding cross-country as to the athletic program of our middle schools. Uh, these numbers indicate the number of students that have participated in a running club at each of our middle schools. So again, it, it substantiates the interest level of uh, running in our middle schools. I am requesting an increase of $8,000 for coaching supplements to add cross-country to our middle school program. As noted, um, like I said, as noted on the slide, you know, our students are actively participating, and this is a sporting event that students of, uh, that many students' ability levels and skill levels can participate in successfully. This slide summarizes uh, the 2014-15 budget priorities that are aligned with goal three for Stanley County Schools. It includes an increase of $153,587 with $40,000 being one time and the remaining $113,587 being requested as a continuation request. Stanley County Schools recognizes the importance of establishing community state and stakeholder partnerships. This slide shows accomplishments during the 2013-14 budget year under Goal 4. I am very pleased to announce that Stanley County Schools has established the Stanley County Schools Educational Foundation during the 2013-14 school year through a seed uh, donation of $50,000 to, to support instructional priorities. And again, this is a project that I look to see grow in the coming years, and, and it's a way that we will be able to invest in instructional priorities um, and special projects. This slide again summarizes the 2014-15 budget priorities for Goal 4, noting no request for an increase in this area. Finally, Goal 5. Stanley County Schools recognizes the value of safe, technology-rich facilities to support 21st century teaching and learning. This slide outlines accomplishments under Goal 5 for the 2000. 13-14 uh, school year. As noted, we invested $500,000 of our 2013-14 capital outlay budget into technology for the current school year, uh, much of that for the implementation of our Chromebook project. 
Other accomplishments under 21st century systems include the selling of the old Central School, uh, the leasing of New London Choice Middle School to, uh, tar for the Tar Heel Challenge Program, and our partnership with Stanley Community College to utilize uh, West Main for their programs. Um, an additional area to indicate um, our goal to be efficient is our alignment of our career and technical programs such as cosmetology with Stanley Community College to avoid duplication and to increase efficiency. This slide shows our, or summarizes our needs assessment for goal five and also indicates that we will be able to meet our priorities for the 14-15 school year without additional request in this area. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Mr. Josie. Mr. Josie will provide you additional uh, background information on the budget and a final summary of our request and then we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Lucas, uh, thank you for, for your time tonight. Uh, the first slide here, what I want to go through is just uh, the state of the North Carolina and the budget that they're providing to Stanley County Schools. This is their planning allotment. Of course, you may have heard just last week uh, Governor McCrory's budget has came out. Of course, the legislators have not uh, produced a budget as of yet. Uh, what we have here is the 2013-14 versus 2014-15 school budget. The dollar allotments across the top are showing a, a current decrease of approximately $272,000. And position allotments, which is actually the, the bulk uh, of our state budget, um, is going down five months of employment, which is, uh, equates to 14,000, uh, just over $14,000, a total of $286,000 decrease from the state of North Carolina. This is a 10-year history of the county appropriations, um, blue bar being the current expense, red bar being the capital and green bar being the debt. This data did come from the NCACC uh, website. What it shows here across the bottom is the trend line. That is the uh, per pupil funding. And you'll see, uh, of course, one thing I think that you could be proud of is that uh, even during a, a down economy, that number did increase over a 10 year period. This is the 1415 local budget summary. And what I've done is actually given you a two year history here. At the top is the 1213 current expense funding of $9.4 million, and then an increase, um, as Dr. Griffin had mentioned, the one middle school resource officer and the four online facilitators that you uh, increased the budget for in 2013-14 uh, to give us a, a beginning budget, um, so to speak, in 2013-14 of $9,570,000. Uh, what I've done here on the, the very first line under that, the 286,000, that you'll notice was the decrease of the state funds. So if we were to just hold the line and produce a hold the line budget, uh, you would need to show that as an increase on the local side. Uh, we then came up with to offset those cut that those cuts on the state side with cuts of our own, uh, to, so that we're not just um, asking, but we're also showing that we're willing to make some cuts on our own. And the 2014-15 budget uh, reductions there will be the reduction of one building level administration position, uh, the continued energy savings that we are putting in place across our district. Uh, transferring $75,000 out of our textbook fund and also with the Chromebook project uh, we had budgeted uh, the amount for, for obviously four grade levels in the high schools only need three grade levels in the middle schools so there is a reduction in, fun, uh, in needs there to come up with the total budget reductions of $320,000 and then there the next set are the budget increases a summary of what Dr. Griffin has already presented and I broke them down as the one-time expenditures and the continuation items comes to a total budget request of 10267037 which is an increase over the 1314 funding of 696169 this is our current 2014-15 capital budget request um, as dr griffin mentioned it is $59,900 less than the amount that was funded this year uh, several of the items uh, just to note obviously the 150,000 on the right miscellaneous roof repairs we continue to have those in our budget uh, pretty much on an uh, ongoing basis. Um, I would also direct your attention to the top left, controlled access at North Stanley High School and South Stanley High School. That's $175,000. Uh, those are the last two high schools in that project. 
and uh, of course happy to report that the four schools uh, that bid did go to Secure Canopy, a Stanley County business uh, that's housed at your airport. Um, any uh, only other thing there, we are planning to replace the West Stanley High School gym floor and several bleachers in our gyms as well. Uh, the, uh, well, I was just trying to hit some of the high numbers. Um, also on the far right, so a replacement of a transportation record, $90,000. That also is coming along with the state funding of 90000 It's a $180,000 record, but they're going to give, they're going to pledge 50% of that budget. That actually concludes our presentation. I'm sure you may have some questions. Do members of the board have a question for any of the school representatives here? How much shall receive per pupil from the state dollar wise approximately? Approximately uh, just over $5,000. Okay, so like with the dropout rate, if you could get more kids to stay in school, like all 110 of them, that'd be like a half a million dollars you'd be getting. <coughs> then a um, couple things I noticed is one is uh, I appreciate y'all really utilizing some of the buildings, especially with some of the older buildings you're not using anymore. That's a good thing y'all did with you know, the Tar Hill Academy and selling Central Elementary School and stuff. I know we met with the Community College Board about a week or two ago, and they have an interest in Ridgecrest and perhaps make it a culinary school at that, and I would hope that maybe you guys would seriously look into that. That'd be something really unique to the area, especially when we look at the budget requests, and you're, you're spending $20,000 to replace a boiler out of Ridgecrest. So, you, you know, when you have buildings, they cost money, and every time, you know, I hope you guys seriously take a look at redistricting and perhaps school closings if needed, because, you know, a lot of these repairs you know, if you only need 19 schools and you have 21, you know, it's just a costly thing. That's just comments on that. But I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I know it's tough, but I appreciate y'all working in limited, with limited budget. Anyone else? Well, again, I, I compliment you on the presentation. I uh, also want to express again our gratitude to um, school officials for meeting with us several weeks ago. Thought we had a very uh, open and, and um, constructive uh, conversation uh, that was certainly very positive. And um, we, uh, I, I know the manager is going to be taking all the information that you've given to us and uh, uh, boiling it down to what we can do. And we're certainly uh, looking forward to the budget season as we move forward to look at all these requests as well as others that we have to look at. Again, one more time, does anybody have a comment or question? Otherwise, thank you very much. And thank you for consideration to all or any of our requests. Next item on the agenda is the Economic Development Commission consideration of a economic incentive agreement for global packaging. Uh, presenter is Andy Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, members of the board. Uh, you'll need to call a public hearing this evening to consider this economic incentive agreement. The um, public notice is in your uh, packet. The project, which was referred to as Project Flex, uh, is in Global Packaging Solutions Incorporated in Oakboro. The term of this agreement will be five years. The anticipated investment over that five-year term is $1,080,000. Anticipated taxes to be paid with the, over that five-year uh, investment term, um, minus depreciation for the, uh, the the personal property will be $26,064. The incentive amount of a 30% grant over those five years is $7,819. And the jobs to be created is a minimum of five new jobs. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions of the manager before we uh, declare the public hearing open? Seeing none. Um, I will declare a public hearing open to discuss uh, the incentive agreement for Global Packaging Solutions. Is there uh, anyone here tonight that uh, would want to come forward to speak for or against this project? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed and ask the board uh, what's your pleasure. I make a motion that we um, accept the economic development package to help with Global Packaging Solutions. I have a motion to accept. Do I hear a second? Second. So motion by Commissioner Chito, second by Commissioner Morton. 
Um, all in favor say yes. yes. Any opposed? So the, this uh, incentive package passes, and I understand that, uh, Mr. Manager, we have other representatives actually in Oakboro tonight uh, looking at this at the same time that we're considering this. Mm. That's correct, um, sir. The, um, the town of Oakboro will be taking similar action tonight, or at least we hope they will be. Uh, and our economic development director, Paul Stratus, is there to um, answer any questions. Very good. We look forward to moving forward with this project. Next item on our agenda is a presentation of the 2014-15 uh, recommended budget for Stanley County. Uh, and the presenter will be County Manager Andy Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, pleased to be able to present the uh, manager's recommended budget for fiscal year 14-15. Um, a significant amount of work has been put into this. Uh, certainly careful consideration, a look at uh, our accomplishments from the prior year uh, and where we we're making progress. And I'm gonna share some of that with you tonight. And I would be, um, it would be, I would be remiss not to thank the department heads uh, and certainly our finance staff and, and, and HR for all of their um, assistance with this budget. Uh, a great deal of time goes into developing the, the budgets at the department level and making those requests and then reviewing all of those and putting together uh, this final product that you have before you this evening. And then certainly we will go from here to public hearing and then several budget workshops before you all adopt a budget at the end of the June. So without further delay, I'll go through this. Basically, the bottom line uh, on this budget, no recommended tax rate increase. There's a focus on deferred maintenance. Uh, we've got aging buildings, and uh, we've been putting off some of this deferred maintenance for several years, and we need to reinvest in ourselves. Um, it, uh, this budget focuses on uh, continuing to support our economic development initiatives, both the incentive grants, the existing industry that we put in, that you all put into place um, the, the focus on an in, uh, existing industry and the additional resources you put to that last year's budget, that those dollars continue to stay in this budget. I've also been recommending an additional funding for agricultural economic development support, increased funding for education, and I think you'll see that our performance results indicate that progress is being made. Uh, this is a multi-year budget illustration. Uh, this budget calls for fifty-six. $0.03 million, that's about a $581,000 increase, that's 1.05%. Inflation since July is 1.1%, uh, measured by the CPI Southern Region, so this increase is less than inflation. Um, you can also see that um, we're still just a little above where we were in 09-10, and so we've, we've gone through um, several years of, of lean budgets, and we are ramping back up. Um, but again, I, don't be I believe this, this increase is certainly uh, consistent with inflation, uh, and, and, and as a result of no tax increase, I believe it's, it's not burdening, burdening our citizens or our um, businesses. Um, the, the budget includes $37.2 million in county money, local money. That's a $427,000 increase, 1.1%, again, consistent with CPI and inflation. Uh, 4.3 billion in assessed value. That's about a 0.9 percent increase uh, in assessed value. The budget includes $856,000 in fund balance. That's a $61,000 decrease from last year's appropriation of fund balance. However, 662,000 of that, over 75 percent, is tied to one-time capital outlay and educational grants. Um, just the areas of focus: jobs and investment, being more efficient. And improving the quality of life and I'll go through some of the uh, performance uh, indicators that we've seen in those three focus areas. When you look at jobs and investment we've created the highest number of jobs uh, since 2010. In 2010 that was primar primarily one industry with Michelin um, but this is this year has been our most successful year in terms of adding jobs since 2010. Um, our prospect site visits are trending higher. 
We've been able to leverage our county dollars for the uh, AMIT facility, the Advanced Manufacturing and Industrial Technology Program uh, at the Community College. We acquired the Oakboro Sewer Treatment Plant, uh, just did that closing on Friday, which will definitely assist us with moving forward uh, um, with some, some sewer issues in the western part of the county, and we can address those, and hopefully that will spur growth. And the Tar Hill, project, uh, Tar Hill Challenge Project is being designed, and the demo work has already started at that facility, and we will see those jobs being created over the next 12, uh, 12 to 18 months. When you look at being more efficient, our property tax burden is below both the state and regional average for similar size North Carolina counties. This tax, this recommended tax rating, uh, tax rate, um, at staying at 67 cents is, con is um, for the eighth consecutive year. If you all were to have passed this budget at this ta tax rate, that would be eight consecutive years that you've held that tax rate at 67 cents. Uh, employee, our employees per capita is below the average of similar size North Carolina counties. Our capital asset r condition radio ratio has improved since 2009. And our home employee health care expenses are the lowest since they were in 2011, despite the fact that we're seeing significant increases in inflation in, in the, uh, the health care industry. When you look at quality of life, our per capita library and cultural arts spending exceeds the average of similar size counties in North Carolina. Our education funding per student continues to rise. Uh, our reported violent crime rate continues to decline. The county's human uh, community health rankings are demonstrating improvement. And our child abuse reoccurrence rate continues to trend below the state average. And so when you look at all of the things that make up quality of life, you all are making, making progress uh, and continuing to be, uh, um, this continues to be a very good place to raise a family. In terms of what I'm recommending in, the, in next year's budget under the growing jobs and investment, I'm included $12,500 12, to upgrade the kitchen at the Agri-Civic Center um, to enhance our value-added agricultural processing. I'll just give you an example. Cody Strawberry Farm would love to be able to sell strawberries to um, the school system, but they can't because they don't meet the GAP certification. Those are requirements for generally accepted agricultural practices, and there's a certain way that food has to be processed. We can make investments in that, com that, that commercial kitchen uh, that's uh, along the side of the, um, the uh, stage at the Agri-Civic Center. Um, there's a dock there so folks can bring that, that stuff in, they can process and, that, that, then, and meet that gap certification and be able to, to sell that, those products not only to our school system, but really add value to any product. It may be strawberries, it may be pecans, it may be jams, it may be jellies, who knows. But there's all kinds of opportunities to um, market that not only regionally, not, uh, not only statewide, but export that um, around the globe. Um, I'm, main, I'm recommending maintaining our funding for our in existing industry initiatives, maintaining funding for our tax incentive grants, additional funding for a crops agent. Union County and, and us were sharing a crops agent. Um, Union County has decided they want that crops agent full time, and so I'm recommending that we put uh, that we are putting additional dollars into our corporate extension uh, budget uh, to make sure that we can fund that position half with the county and half with uh, the state. At this point in time, we were currently we're funding that a third. Now we would ramp that up to be a half because I believe that crops agent is critical to um, our local economy. And additional funding for education and workforce development. And, uh, our increasing operational uh, efficiency, again, maintaining a tax rate for an eighth consecutive year if you were to approve the 67 cent tax rate. The budget is recommended to increase by less than inflation. Um, there's a continued, I want to continue the focus on our initiatives for to, that have generated health care savings. Uh, that's both our wellness clinic and our uh, gain sharing with employees. And technology investments in EMS, IT, and elections to increase efficiency. And additional funding for deferred maintenance and our energy efficiency repairs. When you look at education, I'm recommending a 1% increase to current expense for Stanley Community College. And additionally, I'm recommending a $25,000 one-time uh, grant for energy efficiency improvements at the school. And so it was a greater than a 2.5% uh, local dollar increase. For the Stanley County Schools, I'm recommending a 1% increase to current expense. That's $95,709. I'm also recommending $150,000 in one-time supplies and materials grant. Um, so that they can uh, um, purchase some of the materials and supplies you heard of this evening, including those uh, the $40,000 for the athletic training, uh, the classroom supplies and um, um, science supplies, and the and the um, and the um, literacy materials. I'm also recommending a $30,000 increase in capital outlay, and I realize the school system has said they need a decrease in capital outlay, but by statute, 
we have to give them what we project to be our a certain percentage of our sales tax. And so as, if we're projecting an increase in sales tax, I have to give a percentage of that uh, uh, by statute to the school system. So this would be an additional $30,000 that they'll be able to put into additional capital outlay initiatives that they didn't have listed um, that I know they're like us. They got aging buildings and, and you can always do more deferred maintenance um, or put it away for a rainy day and be able to have those dollars available in the future. Where your money goes, 87%, $48.8 million for mandated services, jails, debt, DSS, EMS, sheriff, education, and there are others. 76% um, goes to three major categories of spending, health and human services, education, and public safety. And so I think it's important, I think, for the public to know that there's not only, first of all, there's not a lot of discretion in, in, that, in this budget. 87% goes to mandated services, meaning 13% goes to discretionary services, such as economic development in the airport, in the libraries, things that people look to for quality of life. Uh, but the majority of our funding is going to things we have to do, such as the jail and debt and EMS and sheriff. Um, and again, 76% is going to three major categories, one third of local dollars are allocated to education. If you look at our human capital recommendations, I'm, rec I'm recommending a 1% COLA to be effective 7-1 for our employees. I'm also recommending 160,000 be set aside in contingency for a possible pay for performance. Um, also merit in, in 115 of, or January of 2015. Um, that is the con uh, consistent with what we did in 2014 for our employees in terms of merit. I believe it's important that we reward employees who are being innovative and are, are highly performing. Uh, and obviously um, that, that's contingent on us having the revenues that our sales tax is coming in where we expect it to do, um, that we haven't had uh, expenditures that we didn't plan on. And so we always evaluate that and decide in January whether we can do that. But I'm asking that those dollars be set aside in contingency for that. Um, the cap, uh, again, we're, I'm recommending the, the elimination of one position in the tax office. Um, this is consistent with where we were going with the tax and tag program last year. Um, basically, um, now that the state is doing the collection of the tag and the tax together, we're not in the business of collecting taxes for vehicles. And about a half of our work volume in terms of taxes, half of it was vehicles, the other half was real property. And so we've taken essentially a half of our, our work volume off of our staff. This position's been vacant since February when we froze it. Um, and so I'm recommending that we eliminate it um, and, and for the next year. But I'm also re, um, seeking to increase an administrative support position that's actually a generalist position who can work in the tax office and the tax administration office upstairs and they can float based on um, times of high volume in those different areas. And I'm recommending that they move from a 30 hour position to a 37 half hour position. I'm recommending one new part time temporary position in DSS to help with the NC fast conversion that's putting a lot of stress in both our food stamp and our Medicaid areas where we're, we're taking on a lot of overtime and comp time costs. Uh, and I believe that we need to put some additional resources there, uh, at least on a part time and temporary basis till we can get the NC fast system implemented. Um, I'm also recommending that we shift some dollars from our contractual line item in the DSS budget uh, to a part-time temporary line on for an additional, well, this position already exists, but this would allow them to work more hours in a part-time temporary capacity. I'm also recommending that we continue our wellness clinic through the health department. Uh, we believe that that has demonstrated uh, a return on investment, uh, and I share that information with you on a monthly basis. I'm also recommending the continued uh, in, in health insurance gain sharing, where it will be basically if employees participate on our health insurance uh, for the full year, and we, we generate a savings over a certain amount, we, get, we share 20% of that with our employees um, in a one-time bonus. And we believe that that um, is incentivizing our employees to be uh, better shoppers and better consumers of their own health care. We have choices, and I think that, you know, instead of going to the ER, you can go to an urgent care, and it costs us far less. And we're really beginning to see that, that our employees are becoming better consumers of health care, uh, and we're taking accountability and we're sharing some of that um, um, savings with them and then continuing to pay 100% of employee health care premiums. Major budget changes, um, $173,000 in increase for health insurance. You may ask, why are we increasing it if we're seeing savings? 
we're self-funded and so we have to set aside uh, um, sufficient money for our reserves because this year may be good and next year may be good but the year after that may be really bad uh, for us in terms of claims and we can do some things to control our claims but unfortunately when folks are diagnosed with cancer and other things that we sometimes can't control those really begin to drive our health care costs and we've had a good year um, and I hope we have a good year next year but it's important that we continue to, to um, put some of to adjust our rates so that we have a sufficient fund balance in that fund for those years that aren't as good um, on our claim side. Uh, there's an increase for school resource officers and that's offset by revenue. An increase uh, for the annualized merit that we did money for merit in January so we have to annualize that cost uh, for the full year uh, for 14-15. An increase for the employee COLA 1% that would be effective January 1. The one-time supplies and materials grant for the school system of $150,000. An increase for deferred maintenance. Uh, an increase for the school's current expense, uh, a reduction in school debt, uh, and an increase in elections laptop and printer replacement. In terms of capital outlay, those items that are $1,000 to $9,999, new compactors for solid waste, a debris blower for the airport, installing a, a storage building for SCUSA, and uh, a lubrication machine for the dental, dental tools in the dental clinic. And, and, um, the request was 26800 and I'm recommending that full amount. In terms of capital outlay of $10,000 and greater, um, you can see there are several there. I won't read those to you individually, but there was about $1.1 million in requests. I'm recommending $616,000 uh, in the recommended budget. I will note uh, the Board of Elections wants to replace their um, voting machines and they're probably going to come to the to the uh, public hearing on the 2nd of June at your next meeting and request that you include that in your recommended budget that that uh, I've looked at that I believe that the technology has has is, is is good through 2016 I believe we have to replace it in next year's budget but since we're already appropriating 65 I'm recommending $65,000 for laptops and printers for elections I believe that we could wait another year that still gives them time to purchase it in, in January, October of 2015 and get it in place for the primary uh, in May of 2016 before the next general, large general election. Um, and so, you know, you certainly are, that, that was my opinion on it. Uh, you certainly are entitled to your own opinion on that and whether we should, we should do that um, in, in this year's budget. Um, but I believe we can get another year out of that elections equipment. Well, where's our money come from? Uh, revenue summary. And these percentages are roughly the same and consistent with the current fiscal year. And no specific revenue source has increased or decreased by more than a per, uh, tenth of a percentage point. But you can see the majority of our revenue comes from ad valorem taxes and sales tax. Outside agent re request, we had a request from Central Park NC. Uh, we typically get a request from them, and we used to fund them at one point in time, but when budget got tight, we cut them out. Um, I believe the money that we're going to appropriate, or I'm recommending appropriate through cooperative extension for the value-added agricultural process and commercial kitchen will have more value than the $10,000 we're going to give Central Park, which is in Montgomery County. And, um, and, and there's just little about we can do to hold them accountable for those dollars, and they're, they're looking for $10,000 to do some sustainable agricultural types of efforts in the region. Um, and then the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and that's really mandated by uh, the local bill that set the Convention and Visitors Bureau up, and so the, the request of 25000 and we're recommending that 25000 Some fee changes, um, recommending uh, some increases for plan review in the fire marshal's office. We currently charge for plan review in the inspection's office, but don't charge for any of the plan review of the fire marshal's office. Union County, Cabarrus County, and Rowan County, and Mecklenburg County all charge for uh, the plan review in the fire marshal's office, and I anticipate that's a, um, um, a ten thousand dollar increase in annual revenue to help offset the cost of us doing that plan review. I'm also recommending a, um, the addition of a an optional um, express plan review options for companies that may want to have their plans reviewed in a forty eight hour time period or less. And there would be a six hundred fee attached to that. There's certainly nothing that says they have to do it. They can go through our normal plan review process. And our goal is to do 90% of those in 10, in 10 business days or less, and we, we, we do a good job of hitting that mark. Um, but this would be an option available to those who, uh, for some reason, want to get their plans through in less time. This would allow us to pay the overtime or cover the loss of worker productivity to pull folks in the office to do that review. 
recommending a $1 increase to our household solid waste fee. Albemarle is proposing a, um, uh, um, uh, an increase in their landfill tipping fees, and so that's just going to get passed on to us when we take our solid waste to those uh, from our convenience sites through the Albemarle landfill by our contractor. And so to cover that cost, I'm recommending a dollar increase. I'm recommending an increase in the uh, our, our pit relocation um, as they move the pit up and down at the Agri Civic Center. Um, it's a very uh, labor-intensive process, and I'm recommending that we increase that fee. Um, it's currently $200 to $350 um, so that we can cover the cost of overtime and labor for doing that. Um, I'm also recommending an increase for adoption fees for cats and dogs. And the health department, uh, you'll see in your packets, has, been, has requested multiple fee changes for prescription, prescription drugs and other procedural-related costs. Volunteer fire districts, there are several who have rec 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 uh, requested an increase. Bethany has requested an increase of 0.25%. Uh, Most of these are basically looking at, hey, we've got equipment that needs to be replaced, and we want to begin the process of setting aside resources to uh, replace that. Uh, just inflationary costs for their turnout gear, uh, air tanks, uh, fire trucks. In the case of New London, they're looking at replacing uh, air tanks and uh, um, in the future replacement of two engines and a 35-year-old tanker. Um, east side's looking at uh, associated with gear, air tanks, hose replacement, and a future truck replacement. And so m most of these are tied to wanting a request because of the, of, um, the need to be, be replacing equipment, not necessarily in this year's budget, but in future years, and they want to be able to save those dollars um, so they don't have to take on additional debt. If you look at our enterprise funds, uh, we're, we're performing fairly well. Um, you can see this where we are from a, if you look at our water and sewer bills combined and how we compare against similar size ec uh, counties of, um, of in our economic tier. Um, you know, our bills are in the green range of an $80.93 combined. Uh, and that, you know, that those range from $23.17 in that same group to $142. And so we're still in that dark green range. Um, if you look at our conservation, we're still uh, pretty close to being in the dark green there. Affordability, when you look at um, um, home incomes, we're, we're in the yellow there, uh, and so I think we have to keep, continue to keep an eye on that. Um, and then our depreciation, you know, that's just the fact that we don't fund depreciation. We fund our budget based on, uh, you know, we, we have to look at depreciation in our enterprise funds, but we don't fund that. If we had to increase and, and, and actually budget for inflation, your bills would go from the $80 uh, at least into the $142 range if we had to actually budget for that inflation. But you can see our work orders are starting to increase just slightly, but for the most part we're holding our own there, even though we've added many miles of water line. Our tr the one item that, I, uh, that we pay attention to is our, our treated water loss. That's the, the water we buy from Albemarle and we put into our system, but we're losing uh, almost 25 percent of that before we're billing that out to customers. Some of that's related to fire departments when they have a fire and they draw that off the tanks, but a lot of this is just water that's lost in the system. I believe that, uh, and when we looked at the replacement of the Baden system, we, we, we factored that, that, the, that into some of the, the expense that we would be saving on that. Um, and so right now we're at 23.5 percent on average over the last two years. The national standards for the American Water Association are anywhere to 5 to 25 percent based on the age of your system. So um, I, that's, an, that's an item we just have to continue to take a look at. I think we'll, that'll come down as we make re repairs to the Baden system. We have, a, we have a fairly significant problem in that, in that system because of the age of the system. I'm recommending a 3 percent rate increase, but that was based on Albemarle proposing a 5 percent uh, rate increase. They've actually proposed an 8 percent rate increase for their water and sewer. And if, if, that's, if that gets approved by the city of Albemarle, and we'll certainly know that before typically they approve their budget earlier than we do, I would recommend that we consider a proportionally higher tax or rate increase um, that higher than, you know, to, to ramp up. So if they go eight, we would go five. If they go, you know, seven, we would go four or something along that, that we'd be somehow being staying proportionate to that. Again, the 3% was based on our belief that Albemarle was going to recommend 5%, but they did 8%, and so we're going to fall behind. Again, the major, a, a huge cost to us is the purchase of water from Albemarle, so if their rates go up, our cost goes up. Um, so that's a, that 3% rate increase, um, the, the, the uh, 1931 on 2,000 gallons, $9.91 after, and sewer, 687. 
We're keeping the base rate for our West Stanley wastewater treatment plant. That's the former Oak Borough wastewater treatment plant that will now be the West Stanley wastewater treatment plant. We're keeping that base rate consistent with what it was the current fiscal year um, of $4.30. Overall, the Greater Baden budget increased to $427, Piney Point $50, Stanley Utilities $276,000, but 195 of that is tied to one-time capital outlet. Our enterprise, other enterprise funds, our airport and our 911. If you look at our airport, our, te our total jet fuels, we've really begun to, to push up our jet fuel gallon sold, and that's a good revenue source for us, uh, with the the ability to sell to the federal um, to the federal government and those folks in the, uh, on the federal contract. Um, I believe that we'll we'll exceed uh, several years of um, prior um, uh, gallon sold, and that certainly has an impact on our, our revenue. If you look at our air traffic operations, they're also trending upwards um, and, and also sort of getting back to where we were in 2010 before the economy took a dip. And when the economy takes a dip, general aviation flights take a dip. So you look at our 911 calls uh, per staff hour, we're, we're sort of staying consistent with where we've been for the last five years. And so it appears that our staffing uh, is in good, sh good shape there. And when you look at our outcome of uh, the number of, of the percentage of 911 calls answered in 10 seconds or less, which is the uh, a nat North Carolina and a national standard, and it's supposed to be at least 90 percent, uh, our average for fiscal year 13-14 is 94.8 percent of calls answered in 10 seconds or less. Uh, the airport budget I'm recommending 851,000. Uh, that's an 11,000 dollar increase, 1.3 percent. Uh, 245,000 dollars from the general fund. That's a decrease of $44,000. Um, that's a result of less capital outlay. We, last year we bought a big tractor, and so that was a fairly significant purchase, and we can back that purchase out. We have increased fuel sales, and we have increased rental revenue from renting space to secure, camp, can, uh, secure canopy uh, at the new terminal and to the flight school at the old terminal. And so as those revenues have gone up, they're less dependent on county dollars uh, for that budget. I'm recommending a $422,000 budget in uh, 911 fund. It's a $468,000 increase, $134,000 in fund balance appropriated. Um, but that um, increase in budget is primarily tied to a one-time um, uninterruptible power system, basically, basically a backup power system um, unit that we need to buy and replace in the 911 center. Uh, and that would be a one-time cost. So the budget in brief, no tax rate uh, increase recommended. That's the eighth consecutive year. Additional funding for education and workforce development, public schools, $150,000 one-time supplies and materials grant, $25,000 grant to the community college for energy, system, uh, energy efficiency improvements, and also 1% current expense increase for the um, schools and the community college. Deferred maintenance, um, additional funds, $125,000 to do some roof repairs here at the Commons. We've got several issues in this section of the building. We replaced the school board section uh, a couple years ago, but this section of the building we have some significant uh, water damage in the HR, uh, the, the uh, manager's conference room, and in EDC we've got, we're showing areas where we're having, we're really having some issues with the roof. We need to get those uh, taken care of before it gets worse. Uh, the library, I'm recommending some additional funds there for some renovations. The Snugs House uh, and the jail, some renovations to the old section. Additional funding for public safety and vehicle replacement, sheriff's office vehicles, and some jail equipment maintenance. EMS defibrillator uh, replacement and the 911 backup supply um, replacement. Investing in employees of 1% COLA, the pay for performance, the continued wellness clinic and the insurance gain sharing, and economic development, the existing industry allocation, the, the continued incentive funding, as well additional funding for that commercial kitchen upgrade for value added agricultural processing. In terms of process and the calendar, the June 2nd will be your budget public hearing um, and that aligns with your next meeting. On June 2nd, uh, budget workshops. You need to identify dates, and I would hope that on your June, at your June 2nd meeting, you would do that. Um, tentative dates that we set up during when you're, we, we set your um, budget calendar earlier in the year they were June 9th, 12th, and 16th. But certainly, there, there's a, there, you're not married to those dates, and you can you can change those. But we hope you'll do those on June 2nd because we'll have to recess the June 2nd meeting. And budget adoption is tentatively set for Monday, June 23rd. I'll be happy to answer any questions the board may have at this time. If you've been paying attention tonight, you heard a lot of a lot of words, both from the school and from the county manager. I hope you're able to listen to all that. That's, that was fast. Um, I think I speak for the entire board when um, I say we owe a debt of gratitude to the county manager, 
and to the finance staff for the great work that they do. Um, several of you have been up here longer than me, but um, I think that you would attest to the fact that we get good presentations. It, it's helpful to understand the, the broad array of things that we have to deal with and look at, and so uh, we do appreciate that. Um, are there any comments or questions from the board immediately? Mr. Chairman, uh, this may not be appropriate time, but uh, it uh, has to do with our uh, next meeting. Uh, since Commissioner Morton will not be able to attend on June 2nd, could we possibly move that to June 9th and then stretch our others? I mean, if we need to meet because of statute or something. We just need to know tonight whether you're going to do that because we got to do the pub. We got to do the notice of public right. hearing for the budget, and so we just need to know so we can tell the paper so we can. We'll, the deadline for that is um, is Wednesday. I think that's a, a legitimate uh, change request. Um, you want to you want to make a motion and I'll make, make that, that change form, request I'll make now. Make that the form of a motion. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner McIntyre that we change our next scheduled meeting from June the second to June the ninth. We have a second from. Um, Commissioner Dennis, any questions or comments? Okay, without any, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, same way. Okay, so we'd like to move our, our budget. Um, I just, um, you know, the, the, the thing that, as Andy was talking so fast, that I don't want people to miss out on are all the pluses that are there. Um, we haven't mentioned it tonight yet. Maybe that's coming later in somebody's comments, but Stanley County has purchased the wastewater treatment plant in Oakborough. You mentioned that in your comments, and uh, that, I think that's a, that's a huge improvement for county services. Um, things that you mentioned, uh, tax stability, uh, that our pricing for utilities are compatible with those in the region. We're increasing jobs and, and economic development activity, and certainly uh, uh, related to agriculture specifically. Um, our trend line, as Mr. Josie uh, presented to us earlier, even through an economy uh, that's been terrible over the last number of years, uh, continues to move forward. And uh, um, uh, I think this board has done a, uh, a good job of trying to take care of the staff that work for the county. Uh, they've done an admirable job, and uh, there have been efforts that have been made to take care of those. And those are just several of the things that, that seem to pop out at me. The conundrum is that, as you heard, the schools are requesting about a $700,000 increase, and um, the county manager indicated that we're only going to have an increase of $581,000 in, in revenues. So already we're, we're behind an eight ball looking at every request, knowing that there may be other things that uh, are coming before us um, as we move forward. Uh, so uh, uh, enough comments probably from me at this point, but uh, we do appreciate the work that our staff does and, and we look forward to getting into the weeds on uh, some of these issues. Again, any, anybody got a comment? Okay. Our next item on the agenda is the um, uh, Stanley Community College Board of Trustees appointments and again our presenter is um, County Manager Andy Lucas. Stretch that out long enough for you to get your seat. <laughs> you did, thank you. Um, you have enclosed a letter from Dr. Case um, regarding two current board members, um, Ms. Daisy Washington and Ms. Nadine Bowers, whom, um, whose terms of expire will expire on June 30th. Um, you also have several names of folks who have applied for these boards in your packet. Uh, and so uh, the request tonight is for the board to appoint or reappoint two members to the Stanley Community College Board of Trustees each to serve a four-year term through June 30th, 2018. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions of Andy at this time? Hearing no questions, uh, I'd entertain a motion. I'd like to um, make a motion that perhaps we reappoint Nadine Bauer. She just took over as the board chair out there six months ago and is just getting comfortable in that position and um, keep her going and also for the second slot I'd like to um, nominate Miss Anita Scott she was she did a great job as the chairman of the school board through some tough times and stuff to for the so I'd like to nominate those two people okay the uh, floor still open for nominations or uh, do I hear a second first of all on those 
Okay, Commissioner Dennis has a second on those. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, um, all in favor of the motion that uh, Peter made to nominate uh, Nadine Bowers and Anita uh, Owen Scott, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, well, th those are the two appointments that we will indicate to uh, Brenda Case then. Um, Commissioner Dennis, you had asked for a resolution to be added. Um, uh, I would, I would, uh, that's our next item on the agenda, and I would ask uh, for any comments from uh, either from you or from our county manager. I don't have any. I mean, I've read the uh, resolutions he put out, the last one, and uh, talked with Commissioner Morton about it. I was, had some other ideas, but and he pointed out to me real quick, and, and I understood it. And thank you, Commissioner Morton. Uh, for why we didn't put the uh, uh, name in there because it does make it very politically thing. If we leave it generic, it does not make a, any put it on anyone back. And uh, we're just st stating that we do support getting our lottery funds money back over a period of time. And uh, anyway, thank you. Let, let me just go a little bit further into the explanation if there's someone that may be uh, listening or, or, or watching on, on, on this broadcast. Um, Several months ago, we as a board passed um, or endorsed a letter to be written to uh, encourage the reinstatement of county lottery funds as part of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners legislative agenda. That's the number one item on the agenda. Um, I think that the county has been forced to reallocate uh, approximately $1.2 million dollars uh, from our other programs and services in order to meet the debt that, that we uh, have incurred. And this gives us an opportunity to, to uh, respond to that. There has been a bill that's been introduced in the House, uh, HB 1107. It calls for incremental increase in lottery funds to be appropriated to the public school building capital fund uh, back up in, 20, in uh, FY 1415 to 27%, FY 1516 to 33%, and FY1617 um, back up to the 40% that was a part of the original um, legislation, if I'm saying that correctly. So what we're, what we're considering tonight is a resolution that would uh, express our support for uh, that incremental changes over the course of those three years to reinstate the uh, lottery fund monies back to public school building capital funds. So that's, that's the explanation of what, we're, what we actually have before us. Do I have, have any hear any comments or questions, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, you probably said this, and I missed it, but that uh, this has been a top priority for the uh, our state association for many years. Uh, and a little more background: in 2009, the uh, administration at that time saw fit to go into we get this lottery money in several different categories. Some of it, most of it, we can't control. Uh, in 2009, it's my understanding that um, they decided to take money out of capital, which we were using to pay that debt, and place it in uh, early childhood teachers uh, so that the state could say they didn't reduce the number of teachers. And that's what the administration at that time did. Uh, over the years, that has increased some, and uh, they have not changed that through current uh, other, led, other administrations and the current administration. So that's where we got the shortfall. All of a sudden, the uh, school system had decided on those projects for Aquadale and Locust, and the amount of the repayment was what they were getting in lottery funds at that time. And when they made the change, it was about $500,000, $600,000 less. So in actuality, uh, right now, we're getting about $400,000 more total lottery money than we did in 2009, but it's in different areas, and we can't control where that money goes so we can't move that to capital and we can't move it to anywhere else so a um, little background I've been I've been listening to this and <laughs> looking at it for quite a number of years and uh, so this is an effort to get uh, the lottery fund and of course they reduced the amount of lottery funds that that we got uh, the percentage so I know they're making more money but yet our percentage goes down so I think this is a, a worthy thing and I'm certainly in support of the resolution and support of the bill if, if we can get that through. So just my comments and nobody else's. Thank you for the time. OK, 
Okay, any other comments or questions about the resolution? I hope they do sort of pay attention to what we're sending them and the higher vote will be, and I hope we do pass it tonight. I think we will. But uh, I don't care how you cut it when they reduce our, our money from a fund that was set up primarily of that, voted for that, and now they're taking the wording out of it. What worries me that they may do something else to it. So we need to sort of try to head that off, and I agree with the uh, uh, Commissioner McIntyre that, uh, you know, we'd like to see them redo it over a period of time and put it back to where it's supposed to be and how the bill was passed and the law was passed the first time and don't be changing it after we get it passed. Thank you. One, he, he, he said something that made me think of something else. In the 2009, when they did that, I think that school systems thought they would have an option to use capital money for teachers, but they didn't make it an option. They just did it. And so because some schools didn't need the capital money. They were in good shape capital-wise, and they didn't need that money. But some of us did. But uh, So if they had given an option, then we may have been okay. But uh, just another comment from me. I have one comment. Sure, go ahead. This matter is a preference priority in the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. It's throughout the state of North Carolina, not just down the county. I don't know. I've heard it likened to the fact that if you uh, buy a house and you know what your mortgage payments are going to be, you're okay with that. Then if somebody comes come around and strips some of your revenue, then all of a sudden your mortgage payments stay the same. And and this, uh, I think this conversation actually speaks to what we what, what we've witnessed tonight is we have a um, interaction that continues to go on between the county and the schools, but um, it's all about revenues and things of that nature as well. So. Um, Hopefully we can get back to where we have the revenues that we can help pay for the, for the commitment that the county has on the capital side. And this is, this is what, one of the reasons why we're trying to do that. Um, well, I think we've discussed this uh, uh, quite a bit. I hope, I hope everybody's understanding what we're trying to do. And I would, uh, at this time, um, ask for a motion. I move we approve the resolution. I'll second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Commissioner Dennis, a second by Commissioner McIntyre. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? resolution passes next item on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda um, what's your pleasure make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented second. motion by Commissioner McIntyre to approve as presented uh, second by Commissioner Ashuto uh, all in favor say aye. aye any opposed okay um, glad to see Commissioner Dennis looks like he's feeling a little bit better uh, and um, at this point in time I would um, this time I would ask if there's any public comment. We always allow for public comment at our meetings and we set aside that time. Does anyone like to speak to us tonight? Seeing none, um, start to my left with Commissioner Shuto for, uh, for comments uh, from the board members. And my words can wait a couple of weeks. I appreciate this um, Commissioner Dennis showing up tonight. I know he's uh, cutting mine short so we can get done earlier for him. Okay, uh, Commissioner McIntyre. No comment. Commissioner Morton. I just want to thank the county commissioners for changing the meeting day from June the 2nd to June the 9th. I'll be leaving Friday for a mission trip to Congo. I'll be gone two weeks, and I would miss the meeting on June the 2nd. It's been planned sometime. I'll be attending that trip with my son and daughter-in-law, Dennis Southern and Allison Kessinger. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Mr. Dennis, no comment. Um, I, I've passed out, uh, asked the manager if he would pass out to you some copies of a stratified strategic transportation corridor plan. Um, the DOT it has held, is holding public comments on those, and uh, we're going to be discussing these both with the Rock River uh, RPO and some others. But I just want to point out again that on this map, like with the broadband map and other maps, we continue to be a donut hole in the middle of North Carolina. And um, I think that we really need to look at our decisions that we're making uh, as the budget comes along and tax rates and uh, sales tax and other things, school, schools needs to understand that um, we've got to step up or else we're going to continue to be left out. And this, uh, again, is, uh, points it out. Uh, I can guarantee you that you already have representatives uh, at the RPO and otherwise that are, that are seeking to understand this better and to and to not allow us to be left out of this process again but um, we may come back and ask you to uh, 
to be able to maybe submit comments to DOT that help support that. But anyway, more to come on this, but I wanted to share that with you. Um, Mr. Manager, do you have any comments? No, thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Attorney. No comments, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this point in time, then, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss economic development in accordance with GS 143-318.11, parentheses A, parentheses 4, and a personnel issue in accordance with General Statutes 143-311.11, parentheses A, parentheses 6. I'll make a motion to recess this meeting to go into closed session for those numbers he just read out. <laughs> have a motion by Commissioner McIntyre. Have a second. Second by Commissioner Dennis. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're, we're in closed session.